I'm working on the 1985 iron head. So I was having the issue on the last couple trips we went on where I was spitting some flames. Um, it was, I think it was detonating inside of the cylinder. While we're in here, there's so many other parts that need changed. So it was like, work a little bit, find something else that needs replaced, order it, wait, order it, wait. You know, unfortunately where we live, there is not a lot of places that sell parts for these bikes. Well, even in big cities, when, when we broke down on the way back from EDR and we were looking for parts for a damn Evo, that was like pulling teeth in Phoenix. So anyway, um, we are forced to order most of the parts that we need. If we're gonna be already in here, we might as well do it right, even though it sucks being having the bike down. So that's what's been going on with us. Tis the season. Tis the season, yes. And these bikes get whatever they want because they are spoiled, but- They earn it. They earn it, yeah, we ride these bikes, so they, need parts replaced all the time and i could not imagine like it's been itching at us the fact that some of these bikes have been torn down a little bit longer because you find something and then you wait and you got to replace it i could not imagine having our bikes in a shop waiting for parts like that is just well it's not an option it's not exactly it's not an option that's completely foreign to us and that just i don't know if you're going to ride these types of bikes it's almost necessary to be self-sufficient and be able to know how to work on them and you're going to work on them so this is going to be the first time that we are turning into the 85 engine this bike has ran like a top it's ran like a g for years it's, it's done really great but we have put the hurt on her put them so put some serious miles on her so when we actually chopped it and put the hardtail on and everything we did not break into the engine at all. The only thing we've done is the primary and the transmission that we've been inside. So I'll be interested to see what it looks like. And I know that this is gonna open a whole can of worms because we're gonna open this up. Definitely need head gaskets, do rocket box gaskets, see what the piston heads look like in the cylinders. Hopefully this is not gonna turn into a big... Rebuild. Yeah, <laughs> the R word, rebuild. Because we already have three other iron head engines right now in different different uh, levels of, of teardown. So so here we are. And this is one of the main bitches, so she is getting what she wants. And we still have the other projects rolling. You know, it's nonstop here. But it's also been the winter time, so it's like 30 degrees every day. And I know we have not posted all that much lately. And that's because I don't want to put out boring content, man. You know, if I'm working for 15 minutes and find out I got to buy another part before I can keep going, then that's kind of is what it is. I'm not going to bore you with the stupid details of our life. You know, this channel is about motorcycles and bike stuff. And there's snow on the ground right now and it absolutely sucks. So I am not going to document my seasonal depression for you. <laughs> but... We're gonna do a top end rebuild and see what that looks like and kind of go from there. Yeah. So that is that is the plan. I got everything kind of set up. I cleaned up the shop a little bit. I got all my shit handy. I got all my tools handy. You know, I got the book because if you're going to rent on these bikes, go buy the book. It tells you everything, which is perfect. And I got my favorite ratchet. So we're good. So it works out. It feels like every winter it's something else. Which realistically, you read any of those old magazines, and that's what everyone did in the winter is rebuild their engines. So last winter we had the Evo Motor FXR teardown bonanza. And it seems like this winter is going to be a whole lot of iron head motor and, and a shovel head motor. So I'll be learning as I go on some of these engines. Well, you know, if you buy these old bikes and you ride them once a year, then you don't have to fix them all the time. You mean you can ride a four speed iron ahead down the highway? I'm surprised that old four speed kept up with us. We're only going 60 fucking two. 
<laughs> but that's the difference of talk about it and be about it. We don't buy our car hurt and then roll it in the dirt just because. We don't right. let oil leaks sit on our bike just to look like we're in the fad. If your car hearts don't look like this, you didn't try hard enough. <laughs> well, yeah. You sure the hell didn't work hard. I think that's why so many of those people at some of the chopper events we go to don't want to talk to us. Because it's easy to just show up and swipe your credit card instead of reading a book and figuring out and, you know. Because we're dirty bikers. Dirty old bikers. They don't like dirty old bikers. Nobody likes dirty old bikers. That's why they've made it all PG. Well, yeah, the, it's super PG. There's no, the scene is not forever two wheels. Fuck that. It's fuck the world. <laughs> it's double. It does more than a lot of iron heads sitting in somebody's garage collecting dust, poor little baby. I gotta go work on my car. Okay, go work on your car. Now, meow. Hold on, we gotta be a cutesy, cutesy couple. Look, because we're matching. Look. Meow. <laughs> it worked out mine's darker, so you can't tell how really dirty I am. Yeah. Pretty clean. Well, I was leaking from my heads and rocker boxes, so I know they get adequate. <laughs> they do get adequate oil. Make, make, make bikers dirty again. Well, I don't understand how you can take, like, all of our road trips, whenever we get anywhere, we show up just haggard. You know, our jeans are completely destroyed. We're dirty. You know, we don't, we don't look prim and proper. We don't take our chopper with a complete trailer full of makeup to go stay in a hotel every night. You might have to take those completely off to get them. Yeah. For a while. What? No, it's fine. It's fine. I'm so old school, I don't even use power tools. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay, what kind of power tools are we talking about? What? What kind of power tools are we talking about? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I got rid of the swing cam to get an Evo and then got rid of the Evo for a shovel head, so. That's true. And then we got rid of a shovel head for two iron heads. Because <laughs> we have our priorities in line. Well, we still have more people. Well, yeah, we still have a shovel head and then a handful of iron heads. Handful? Uh, yeah, li a literal handful. What was it, like five? Four or five? Five, I think. Yeah, I think technically five. Yeah, but they're fun. Why not? I'm not complaining. Yeah. We're not trying to fit in. Well, yeah. Well, we can't fit in because the only way to fit in, even in any, any subgroup of the biker culture, and if you want to fit in, it's just, can you show me how much money you spent? You have the new brand. You have the new this. You have a pan head chopper that you don't ride. Well, yeah. <laughs> Did you swipe your credit card for something? Or are you proud of something that you made from nothing? And you know, are you proud of the swap meet parts, or would you rather have all the name brand? But that just goes to what what you value. If you value in this, if you value the people that you meet in the motorcycle culture more than the motorcycling itself, then that shows where your head is at. That is the, um, that's what you invest in. We care about the motorcycles more than the events and all the commercialized, you know, just how much we spent. So that's what we're going to focus on this year going to random destinations and bike trips and we only have like one event that we actually have planned to go to at this point but I digress you guys that understand understand you guys that don't understand that's okay well and if you take anything that we say in any of our videos to be like if you 
don't ride an iron head, you suck, or, you know, if you don't do this, you suck. We're not saying that at all. We're saying just use it, man. Just go ride. Ride and enjoy it. But we feel the need to point out the hypocrisy in the scene and so much of the hypocrisy in some of the people that they live to ride. Which is fine. There's nothing wrong with weekend warriors. Oh, let's see what this looks like on the inside. Where's the flashlight? Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, my. <laughs> we got some buildup for sure. Look at that grimy, man. Oh, geez. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. The exhaust is still from when the exhaust didn't look terrible. Yeah. Well, once we get the heads off and yeah, see what it all looks like. Yeah, that intake is really crusty. <laughs> Um, you get to stand and still in there working on that bike part for the bike. You get, you get close to that. Yeah. Move around. Do you want me to run that through here? No. I'm comfortable. I just run hot. Red blooded American. <laughs> I'm a curmudgeon. I'm cold blooded. <laughs> Thankfully, I have an on-site mechanic that I am constantly distracting him from his projects whenever I do something. <laughs> but that's okay. That was really helpful how you explained this. Now I understand it a little better. Because before I only messed with those uh, evil ones. We got faith in those this time. So shoveling iron heads don't have oil going through the push rods. Okay. Sweet. So now got. Tank off, carb off, intake off, exhaust off, all the push rod tubes off, top motor mounts. So the heads are ready to come off, and I'm worried to see what we're going to find. If the intake valves look like that, I wonder what the cylinders do. <laughs> yeah. If there was that much detonation in there. Yeah, I'm sure it didn't do my favors. Yeah. But my next trick, I will attempt to take the heads off without an impact. Because you can't really fit much in there, huh? Oh, yeah, what's up? Oh, tell you what. Seventeen linkages to try to get to this back nut, but I'm gonna get it. Oh, there you go. See what type of mayhem and carnage has gone on in this cylinder. Yeah. This is the worst one, like that one doesn't look very good, but 
If we're involved, there's carnage. <laughs> Ready to catch it? I think I'll just set out for a while. Oh my. Yeah. She's wet. And crusty. Yep. She is making oil into the cylinder about to wrap twice a year, so. Those striations. Yeah, it's got some. Well, we'll see what the pistons look like once we get the cylinders off. Yeah, you just take these four nuts off and pop them up. Yeah. We're definitely leaking oil here. Leaking plenty of oil. When this head is angry. Angry, yeah, angry. Yeah, you can oil tell. Out of both sides of this head gasket. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can see how all that oil seeping out. Well, you know what? She's earned some TLC, that's for sure. And she's going to get it. Cool. Hmm. Well, let me pull the cam case off now, too, and see what the cams look like. Yeah. Should I take the cylinders off next or the cam case? I would take the cylinders off so you're not getting trash into the cam case. Oh, good call. I'll okay. do that last. The cam case? I would take the cylinders off and get that stuff, you know, some stuff covering all that up and then take the cam cover off last. Okay. Okay, back at it. So yesterday we took the top end off, uh, cleaned up the pistons just while they were in the cylinder, get some of that gunk off, and got some ins insignia on there. But I'm not sure exactly what those mean, if they're stock size or not. But um, we'll measure it and double check. And got the heads off. Those definitely need some THC here. So definitely going to need some valve seals and things. So the goal today is essentially get my shopping list together for all the things that she's going to need. So I already got all the gaskets I need and stuff like that. Hi, Robert. Good boy. What are you doing? Uh, so yeah, I got all the gaskets, but I'm sure we're going to need... A little bit of this and that. There's a little bit of scarring inside of the front cylinder. Definitely can tell that she was running a little hot. So we'll see. Take the jugs off and see what everything looks like. Make sure there's no play in the crank and make a list together of stuff we need to buy and hopefully find some cheap parts at the swap meet in Denver. That's always the goal. And I'm going to try not to get a bunch of trash inside the crank. things 
I destroy? Starters, speedometers, and piston rings. Pretty standard, I suppose, man. Every single one. But at least it was just the top. Yeah, it's easier. That's why it takes all the beating. Yeah. The second one is the backup, basically, for the top. Yeah. That's why you still have compression. Yeah, but that explains a lot. She's angry. Yeah, well, this is part of maintenance. There's a top end rebuild every now and then. It's kind of air cooled engine. Yeah. So last year on the 84 FXR on the front yeah. cylinder head, broke a piston ring and thankfully it didn't crack. It broke into three pieces, but they were all still there. Took off the front cylinder today and it's in two pieces. So that explains some of the striations and the Where's your hammer? the cuts in there. My hammer? Your BB stick. Trash keys falling. Do you need the piston or tire? No, that's fine. It's raining shit. Oh, this one's broken too. Yeah, you got some marks on the cylinder. That has some. Well, that running hot didn't help. Running water? Yeah. Uh, is this one broken too? No, that's not broken. Hold on. Let me see. That one broken? No. Top one? Yeah, top one's broken in two. Hold on, is it complete? Yeah, so it's complete. Okay. Yeah, I see some of the shit's dirty on the hood. Still feels pretty tight. Does it? So which one is the outer piston versus which one's the this inner? This is the outer, this is the inner. This is the one that's gonna have more play in it. It's kind of side to side, but you just don't want it to have any. Well, this guy is so the pistons I can't no, no rotate up and down, them. no up and down, and no rotate. Yeah, so no rotating, and there's just a little bit of play in this, but this one feels tight. Yeah, so you can't. Okay, there's the motor all naked, her top's off. Hehe. <laughs> so both top piston rings broken, clean break into two pieces, but they both have scratches in the cylinder. Definitely some some carbon buildup. But no play. Everything seems still pretty tight. But I wonder where's the flashlight. Yeah, definitely some serious striations. No big gouges. So that's good. Hopefully just be able to hone these babies out. And then definitely some valves, some head work. Rings, honing, clean up these pistons and see. They're not scratched down the sides, no big, big gouges at least. Cool. Did that say the ring size? This is what it should look like. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's a lot different. <laughs> the stock size. Hey, these are stock. Well, this is turning out to be a, a regular thing with us. <laughs> All right, let's see what's broken in the cam chest and then. Mostly just looking for wear. 
Well, yeah. On the cams. I'm sure. Well, yeah, I don't need any more power. Just. Yeah, we just want to see. Just what's... longevity now. The standard piston ring set is 3.187. You know what 187 is? What? That's the police code for murder. Or in Sally terms, it's I murdered another piston ring. <laughs> That wouldn't surprise me that the engine's been gone through. Well, look how clean it is inside. It is very clean. Great. Hell yeah. Yeah, I want my ghetto Stanley cup. Top end's fully off. Two broken piston rings and some valve work, but besides that, that's not too bad for the absolute. Beating she did. Yeah, the beating, the mayhem she has endured. She didn't endure nothing like fucking Saucy did, though, going to the drag strip a thousand times. That's true, not as bad as Saucy. Still broke a piston ring, though. No. Okay, so weekend's over. Just got off work. I got about 45 minutes of sunlight left. And it is way too cold in this shop. The curmudgeon, as he has been referred to, is back on the road. So I'm going to go ahead and take these heads inside to take them apart because I'm not going to be sitting out here freezing for no reason. But here's where we're at. So the engine is tore down, got the cam chest opened, got the pistons removed, the crank, um, the crankshafts themselves feel good, not too much play. Still have the primary opened up. Gonna clean this up, clean up all the covers, make it look good. And I was not surprised to find out that I had broken piston rings, but hilariously, both of the cylinders had broken top piston rings. So, whoops. <laughs> but you know, it's due. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these heads inside, keep everything fully separated between the front and the rear cylinder so that, well, you know, just keeping it organized so we're not crossing things over, putting things where they weren't before, all of everything is kind of smooth to what it's used to. So yeah, all of, all the reasons, whatever, whatever. Bringing the heads inside, gonna clean those up. I'm like already, my fingers are already like too cold to start working because it's freaking freezing in here. So I might just bring them into the living room in front of the fire because it's cold. This winter sucks. And you know, they keep saying we're gonna have a worse winter than normal and I'm not looking forward to it because I'm not. I'm not a winter person. Bikers aren't made for the snow and all this white shit on the ground. But I'm going to bring my book in, go find the valve spring depression tools, and then get this stuff taken apart. I've already decided that we're going to need new valve seats and valves, and I'm just going to do it right. So I'm going to go ahead and wire wheel this and get some of this carbon off with the valve still in so I can try to avoid damaging the valve seats so just get some of that chunky carbon off before i take these bad boys apart now this is the front cylinder so this is the one that i was having the most issues on um, and the front cylinder is where i was having the detonation issues and spitting and popping and backfiring and it's probably because this this here intake seal has gone on strike. So we're gonna have to find a replacement for her for sure. Oh wow. Oh gosh. Yeah, that's just, there ain't no seal left in that. That valve just wants to fall out. That explains some things. Well, there you go. One disassembled head. Well, and this kind of works out. So I'm starting to get cracking. So there was just black paint on these heads prior. And I was starting to get a lot of rust on my fins, on my cylinders and heads. So this works out. So it gives me the opportunity to clean everything up and I'm gonna paint the jugs and the heads and, and get this really cleaned up nicely. You know what would be super sexy? Maybe a little porting and polishing. Really open her up just a little bit. But I'll 
I'll decide on that at a later time. I'm gonna let have my husband look at these and see, because I still don't know 100% what to look for when you are inspecting for wear and things like that. And you know, obviously in the book it explains some of the tolerances, but. I don't know how to use some of those tools and those measurements things. So I want to know that this stuff is right and done. Peachy keen. Figure it out as I go. Fake it till you make it, right? That is my forte. When I'm, I still tend to be kind of unsure of myself when I'm working, well in the shop, in the living room in this case, when I'm working on things, I'm still kind of unsure of myself because I don't want to fuck anything up, especially on important pieces like this, like your engine, you know, your valves, your intakes, all that stuff. So tear down, I'm more comfortable, he doesn't need to be here and watching me for that, but for um, once we do like putting it back together, figuring out what needs to get replaced versus what not. That, I definitely always feel better when he double checks it and looks at everything so that we're not, so that we are replacing the parts that need to get replaced, you know what I mean? Oh. I just think that all of this stuff is just so interesting and fun to see and it makes me really appreciate and understand the motorcycle so much better seeing you know all of the pieces like where your uh, rocker arm pushes and how that activates valves and how the push rods are involved and combustion chambers like I think it's all just so cool to see it in action and you know that's just like in motorcycles I'm just all comfy cozy got my fire going not my jack saying meow meow. Got old hippie's chopper corner there on the TV. It's funny, he just got up his uh, Ghost Rider tribute bike. I'd say he did a pretty darn good job there. Couple differences, but man, I just that just turned out real clean. He's he's super cool. If you don't watch Hippie's Chopper Corner, you go check him out. He's a good solid dude. But yeah, man, it's that's what it's about. Just people loving motorcycles and, and just loving what they're doing and just enjoying it and making something with your hands like the stuff that we're building might not be the cleanest coolest craziest thing on the market but at the end of the day the stuff that we're building is ours and nobody can take that away from us and it's just it's it's a really good feeling and it's I'm, I'm really enjoying this and learning about all the pieces and now being to the point where I can have a afternoon where I just set up the heads and rocker boxes and I can take them apart and I can look and inspect the pieces. Granted, I don't know what all the tolerances are or I can't look at something and know for sure that it has to get replaced versus not, but being able to do this really just kind of means the world to me. And I remember growing up and watching my dad work on motorcycles and like we just had a conversation the other day about, man, you know, I'm worried that, you know, when you're lapping valves, you worried that it's going to be bad or not. And he's like, oh shit, kid, you know, you have to, back in the day, man, we'd lap valves, turn on the engine for a couple seconds and burn up. And it's, you know, it's just cool that having, I don't know, I think it's cool. I like it. I enjoy it. I enjoy doing this and there's no, no better feeling at the end of the day than having this motor apart and then we are going to fire it up and I know that I touched this rocker arm and I put those push rods in and they're all working together and creating just a smooth running machine that's doing everything it's supposed to do. Like that's what it's about man. So sorry this is probably a really close view but yeah it's good stuff. So cool. Just really, I don't know. I think it's really, really, really cool to see. And then, you know, just seeing all the little intricate pieces and things like that. And granted, you know, it can be a pain in the butt because at the end of the day, you might have to get them replaced. 
but say la vie, it is what it is. Oh, I wonder if that's supposed to be, it looks like that's a machined piece. That little divot's probably machined. Okay, that's a wrap. So top end is torn down, opened up the cam chest, all this stuff needs to get retimed, but I, we've, we opened it essentially for the peace of mind. So after seeing all of the bushings and the cams themselves, they don't have a lot of wear and it's super clean. So that gives me a really good peace of mind knowing that I got all good bits and pieces in there. We're not gonna cam it, we're not gonna punch it out. Um, this is more of a budget situation, so we were lucky enough to, well, number one, we were super lucky that those piston rings stayed in the groove on the piston and did not go down in the crankcase, which is like, thank you. So that made it, you know, that could just cause all types of terror inside the engine. So we can hone these cylinders, put some new cross hatches on. We're going to leave, reuse these pistons, clean them up, put the stock size piston rings back in and and button her up man so this bike uh my goal is more longevity than it is speed you know the fxr high compression we did you know all of those upgrades on it on the chopper it doesn't need it honestly this bike is fast as it is and i love it so bender you're on bro we'll see you next time once it's once it's nice and we have this uh we have the rings broken in it's it's gonna be go time man but anyway, so that's where we're at. So now I have a good baseline of the health of my motor and I'm gonna have that, uh, that peace of mind really. So now I know what we need to order. Um, parts are all inspected and things like that. Cams are looking good, cam chest. We're just gonna button that up, retime it, button it back up and then hone out the cylinders, clean everything up. Um, really you know valves uh the biggest thing that we're gonna have to purchase is going to be valves springs and all of those things which we're gonna once i get the heads fully cleaned up and see how the seats look and everything we'll just kind of go from there but anyway that's the journey engines torn apart and now it's going to be work a little bit make some money buy some more bike parts work a little bit make, buy bike parts you know it's just a revolving door of bike parts out here so there you go. Um, yeah, we're looking forward to at the end of the month. If any of y'all are going to be there, we are going to the Denver Moto Expo and Swap Meet, which that's like our Black Friday. That's our, you know, that's our Super Bowls, which I'm super excited about that because there's always great bikes there. But we go there because of the Swap Meet vendors, and they said that there's over 90% vendor spaces sold out. So there's good, good some. There should be some good stuff there, so I'm really stoked about that. And like last year, I found a sweet pair of Evo heads for like super cheap. So, so yeah, there you go. That's the thing. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, yeah, that's that's I, I, that's all I got. <laughs> See you next time.